I am Annie Ryan, as most of you probably know. I don't think that I actually introduce myself in most of the episodes, which I, I probably should do, but here we are anyways. So last week we talked about Marguerite uh, and her daughter Jeanette, and this week we are talking about either Jeanette's godmother or the Mar I don't know or the the mother of uh Marie's Marguerite's godchildren they're related somehow we are talking about Marie Dantier so she's fascinating she and Marguerite and Jeanette are all pretty well connected as far as reformed women go um Marie's really interesting because she is the only woman that is on the Reformation wall in Geneva, which is, I feel like there could be several more names added to that list, uh, but okay, fair enough. Marie is a, a good one to put on there. We don't know a ton about her in general. We, we talked a lot last week and I could have gone into so much more detail on um, Marguerite and Jeanette and, you know, all of everything that led up to what they were, to where they ended up. Like, I could have talked about a lot. Marie, um, she was just kind of there. We, we don't know much. Um, also you have to remember, it has been over 500 years since she was born. So we don't, we don't have much information just in general. However, we do know a couple things. We know that at, in 1508, she entered a nunnery at a young age. What that age was? Beats me. Be beats everyone. We, re we don't know. No one wrote it down. Nobody cared. Um, and then, interestingly enough, for a woman who was on the Reformation Wall in Geneva, she became... Um, an abbess or a mother superior in 1521. So that's fun. Good for her. Um, three years later, approximately, she fled to Strasbourg uh, in 1524 to escape persecution for both abandoning her uh, like clerical vows and for converting to the Reformation. Because those are both big no-nos, especially when you are a mother superior. That you don't you don't do that. That's not cool. So pretty much immediately when she got to Strasbourg, I think maybe a few months probably, again, no one wrote this stuff down, but it was within a year. She married a guy called Simon Robert. Um, if you keep hearing clicking, my sewing machine is oh goodness gracious, that was I'm trying to get the wrong way. I'm so sorry. My sewing machine is being obnoxious. We're doing great. Moving on. She married Simon Robert, like, immediately, which is a huge no-no. He was a priest. She was a nun. I feel like I've heard that story somewhere before. It's probably nothing. Anyways, um, Simon died after five years and five kids. I, they literally just like, bang, 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 bang. Like, it was... A lot. It, they went crazy in those five years. Um, and again, that is a massive no-no in the Catholic Church. Um, I know you guys are not in my Lutheran Confessions class with me, but we spent an entire week, uh, really the equivalent of two weeks because it's a, an accelerated class, um, just on celibacy of monks and nuns. So for them to immediately get married and start popping out kids is it, they kind of spat in the Pope's face with that one. Um, so then she, after Simon died, very soon after, she married Antoine Fremont, uh, and her outspokenness strongly irritated Pharrell and Calvin, who were both very, I mean, you guys probably know John Calvin. Pharrell, I don't remember his name right off the top of my head, but he's another big reformer. And so because that, strongly irritated them. It caused a rift between them and Fremont. It was a whole thing. But that is pretty much all of the backstory we have. We know that she, I think she was, 
I think her Marguerite was Marie's kid's godmother. I'm pretty sure. Um, which is cool. Um, obviously kind of a big deal there for them to be connected, which is why I put them back to back like that. Actually, I don't think it is. I think that was just a coincidence, but I'm deciding now that that's why I put them back to back. Um, and nobody can prove me wrong. So what role did she play in the Reformation? Obviously she has her name on the wall. John Calvin was annoyed by her because it's John Calvin. He was annoyed by everything. It's kind of his whole thing. Um, so what did she do? What was her point? Uh, mostly, you know, we, we remember last week, um, Marguerite was primarily a poet and Jeanette was kind of a modern day Deborah type deal, right? Um, Marie was mostly an author. So she, she is, there are like three works that we have of hers. That's where we found out basically everything about her life is in, in her three works. Um, and those works had very strong themes of renouncing clerical celibacy and extolling marital joys. That's about as far as I read today, because I don't, it's been a day. More than likely, she was the first French, or at least when historians say likely, it means pretty much historians are just very, very hesitant to say, yes, this is definitively the first or the oldest, because something new might pop up. You, you never know. Um, new discoveries are being made constantly. So she was more than likely which basically she was, the first woman to articulate and defend reformed theology, which is a, a huge deal. She was also most likely the first Protestant to give an eyewitness account of the Reformation, um, which, thank you, Marie, very helpful. No one really thought that in 500 years people would be reading through the Augsburg Confession and would be sitting here like, what are these people talking about? Because we don't have the same background as that. So Marie was very helpful in that sense. She was also more than that. She was a super strong evangelist. She wanted everyone to be able to read the Bible for themselves, even women, which is nowadays we're like, yeah, okay. Like everyone can read the Bible. That's fine. Like go for it. Good for you, I guess. But back in that time, um, they, they got really mad at Martin Luther for for translating the Bible into a language that most people could understand. They got really mad at him for allowing people to read. There's a reason why most Christian schools are Lutheran, or rather, I think a better way of saying that, why most Lutheran churches have schools attached. It's, it's because of Martin Luther. He was huge on education, and I think that we're doing it he would not consider the way that we are doing it to be correct. But that's an entirely different discussion for another day. Um, so Marie followed in that same theme. She really wanted everyone to be able to read the Bible. Because if, if you're going to say that this is the true and infallible word of God, but no, you can't read it, like, that's, that's not cool. That's pretty rude, honestly. So that was her thing. Her most famous and controversial piece of writing was a letter to Marguerite. Uh, it was titled a most beneficial letter. Uh, some people call it a, a, a very good epistle, I think is, is a, another word for it. It's basically, it's just, just a good letter. That's kind of all it is. Uh, it's a biblical defense of reformed theology and quote, an impassioned attack on the Catholic church. Obviously, the Catholics were not thrilled because it was a really well-written letter and they hate it when people do that. Like that's, don't do that. Don't. So because she used the Bible to say, Hey, here's why the Catholics are wrong and we're right. Uh, the Catholics got really mad because not only did it make the Catholics look bad, it was also written by a woman. How, how dare they? Women are not allowed to write in this economy. More than that, they got mad because she defended women's rights to be theologians and teachers. She said, and I quote, well, I don't quote, it's translated. 
For what God has given you and revealed to us women, no more than men should we hide it and bury it in the earth. And even though we are not permitted to preach in public congregations and churches, we are not forbidden to write and admonish one another in all charity. Which I think is really, I think is really important the way that she words that. She specifies we are not permitted to teach in public congregations and churches. That's fine. That's what the Bible says. But writing to each other, teaching each other, building each other up, that is more than okay. Um, the letter had a little bit of pushback. Uh, the person who printed it got arrested and, uh, so many copies were just destroyed. I think there were only 400 copies left. Uh, it also caused the Genevan Council to prevent publication of any other works written by females for the rest of the 16th century. So, thanks, Marie. Genevans are, they go crazy. That's all I can say about that. Um, Calvin, like we kind of mentioned earlier, was super annoyed with her because she was so outspoken. She was, I mean, she was a woman and she was speaking in public. You heard, don't do that. Calvin would hate me, by the way. All I do is talk 90% of the time. He would, I would not be Calvin's friend. However, that being said, by the time that she died, and a little bit before that at least, that tension had subsided. He actually asked her, and whether this was a backhanded ask, or I don't know, he, he asked her to write the preface for his printed sermon about female modesty from 1 Timothy 2 verses 8 through 12. So I don't know if he was like, oh, Marie would be a great person to talk about this. She should write the preface. Or if he was like, maybe if I let her write the preface, she will learn. I, I don't know. I don't know what Calvin's motivations were on that specific thing. I think it's hilarious regardless that that is what he decided to have Marie write for. Um, but that being said, that that was John's relationship with Marie. I don't know why I'm on a first name basis with all these guys. I, I'm not. I just have to read so much about them all the time. I love them. So anyways, that is Marie Dantier. Um, we are coming up on the 500th anniversary of when she fled Strasbourg, which I think is fascinating. Um, she is, she is wild. She's crazy. I wish there was like more that I could give you guys, but again, we don't have a ton. So I suggest reading some of her works for yourself. Um, translated if you don't know 16th century French, which like, why? Go learn 16th century French and then read Marie Gantier. I also don't know 16th century French. 16th century German depends on the day. But anyways, that's kind of all I can tell you about Marie, just because that's, what well, one, all we have time for. And also, there's not a ton of information, but I highly suggest reading her works for yourself. They are phenomenal, and I love her. And next week, we are discussing... Oh, I think I'm torn between two people right now. So I'm going to figure that out. Uh, maybe it'll be another French woman because for some reason they're always French. But I do promise that for Reformation weekend, we will be discussing Katharina von Bora. So you're welcome. And I will